Mega Stabler. Today we're checking out the new Italian Destroyer Tier 6 Torigo. I got Guy Flagozzi on there. That's the build. I got that build for the Pablo, the Tier 7 Yolo Emilio, which that build really works well in that. Basically, you use the smokes and the speeds to get uh, the speed boost to get close to hopefully multiple battleships, ideally, and you just nuke them point blank range with your uh, super strong torps. You could try that on this, but the difference is the yellow Emilio torps, I think they're 70 plus knots. These are 60 knots, and uh, it's a lot easier for the ships to dodge, especially if they see a giant smoke monster coming at them, and then, you know, they figure out what's going on here, and usually the smoke doesn't actually uh, last long enough to get in uh, to the point-blank range shot anyway. So you can try that play on here. I've tried it a few times with this thing. And I fully ground this out now, uh, ready for the Tier 7 when it launches today, when you're watching this. Um, but, so far I I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, looking to do that. You play the Pablo Emilio, you look to do that. That's the play you want to be making. Uh, the whole trick with that ship is just staying alive until lanes open up uh, to the backline beddies, then you nuke them. So, a little bit different here. The other uh, issue I have with the Torigo is... Most destroyers, when I'm playing them, I'm comfortable fighting almost all the other destroyers. Uh, oof, that sucks. A great shot from the flyboy there. It takes a third of our health uh, to start the game. That's obviously a major problem. Um, but anyway, the point I'm making is usually, you know, like I'm in a... Uh, pick anything. Japanese destroyer going against whatever. I don't shy away from that fight. Now I might be a little bit more cautious, I might use the smoke to disengage halfway through after hopefully uh, winning an early trade, uh, but this one I'm just finding, you know, it's you kind of have to be a little bit more nervous about fighting the enemy destroyers, so more cautious perhaps. Um, if they're gonna shoot back at you, I think this thing uh, doesn't typically do that well against them. So. I'm trying to be aggressive here, trying to push the base in the middle. We got the smoke deployed, and then we're getting plane spotted again. The flyboy is obviously after us. The AA on this thing does basically nothing. You'll shoot down a plane here or there once in a while, but it's not that great. In fact, the rating on the AA is 17. All right, so, I don't know. It's just, the tools it has, it's kind of, it's got a lot of different tools, but none of them are that, like, super impressive. All right, so... I'm looking forward to the tier uh, 7. Based on that, we'll decide if we want to pursue the tier 8 or maybe look at something else. Um, but just playing the Torigo, and I got some of the lower tier ones. I frankly haven't played them. Um, but, you know, I was just trying to grind this one out to get the tier 7 when it is available. Uh, but I'm not super impressed with it. So we'll see. Maybe the line's going to get a little bit of a boost later in terms of a buff. Maybe not. But as of right now, you can win games, certainly. But I don't think I'd be picking this destroyer over most of the other uh, tier 6 tech tree ships if someone's trying to uh, say win a game and I'll give you a million dollars for instance in a tier 6 tech tree destroyer probably not picking this one all right so uh, we got the SAP as you know it here and when you can get nice juicy shots on lightly armored targets uh, of course you're going to be doing a lot of damage and that part of it can be pretty good against destroyers um, but the problem is you know fighting destroyers in most destroyers, usually you're going to want to be using the HE shell. Just performs pretty well and very consistently. Here they can angle and they can protect themselves theoretically, um, which can make it more difficult. Of course, switching to the AP usually not going to work at this tier either. So, you know, just one more thing to be aware of. Uh, the torpedoes reload really quickly. I got 70 knots on my build. They got decent range, 10 kilometers. Like I said, the uh, speed isn't there and they got 1.1 detection, so... Not horrible there. I don't. I haven't run the uh, the numbers on the visibility of the torps in terms of reaction time, but yeah, they're do they're all right. I mean, they don't hit super hard like the yellow Amilo. We got ten thousand raw damage on these. I think that's twenty two thousand or something. So I'm, maybe I'm remembering that incorrectly. But those yellow Amilo torps hit really hard. You get hit by one or two of those, you're probably dead. Here you can take a couple torps, uh, certainly. But uh, again, the Nice quick reload does allow you to keep them coming uh, throughout the match. Speed, if you've been keeping an eye on the speed, that's actually pretty good. It's, the max speed's just shy of 40 knots. Um, we got a big turn radius, rudder shift not horrible at 4 seconds. 
Uh, but the speed's pretty good, especially when you get that speed boost going. You can get uh, where you want to go pretty quickly. All right, so my concealment, uh, 6.3. Now, I'm not specking for it on line 2, slot 2, like I normally would with most destroyers because we do have a smoke perk on that. Um, frankly, if you're just going to spec for just this ship, I would probably... I uh, use the concealment over that, um, but again, I have this build primarily set up for the yellow, uh, which is using those smokes heavily. And they're pretty good on this too. I mean, it's uh, certainly an advantage to have four of these uh, quick cycling uh, smokes that'll get you uh, out of danger when need be. All right, so jumping in this match here, we got two ships per side. We've got one of their destroyers off. They got one of our battleships off, and each side's lost a cruiser. Uh, like we noted earlier, the Flyboy's flying around. He's been kind of harassing me. He's got us down to about just over half the health. Miyoko, I think, is backing up here. Curious, I launched just to the edge of that island. Number one, he might be trying to turn towards us as he's backing up to try and disengage from whatever's shooting him over there that it looks like he's trying to protect himself by. But also, if he's, you know, backing up and he decides to go forward at any point in time, we might catch him there. So, unlikely, in my opinion, that he would continue to back up the whole time. And we get the Mayhem down. Second destroyer off the board. Second kill for us. And not bad. Now we're trying to get these bases. You can see they're all fully contested. And that's due to the Miyoko currently. Red's actually uh, quite a bit more aggressive in their positioning. Aside from their destroyers. Which of course have been sunk. Um, but this Miyoko. We're just going to go ahead and open up on it. Now we don't have a lot of health here. Uh, but if we kill him. Uh, we should be able to drop spot. Looking at the ring there on the map. Well we do have that ship to the north. Um... So we did drop the smoke to be safe, but I think we can disengage uh, using the vision relatively easily here, as long as we're paying attention on that Sean Horse position. Uh, if he goes further to the left, we might get spotted there. So we do need to be aware of him trying to get out of the smoke. And sometimes this long rolling smoke is actually kind of a little bit annoying. Like a normal smoke cloud, you can it, it'll typically form pretty quickly, and it'll just sit there, and if you need to spot something, which often you do as a destroyer, well, you can just wait till it's done deploying and then move a little bit. And then you can stay by the smoke and reuse it if you need to after spotting the target. Here I'm desperately trying to spot this Miyoko. He's freezing the scoring. He's potentially threatening us. And he's low. So all these factors would be great here. Uh, but he's low enough that we're just going to go ahead and try and take him out as quickly as possible. He's angling here, but if we're hitting this superstructure, we should have a fair amount of success. I don't know if we're hitting hull shots there. He'd probably be able to defend himself pretty easily. Uh, we'll get him off there. There's third kill. And now we're at least capturing the central base, right? The Sharn Horse looks like he's on ring two, which is canceling the second and third rings here. But we need to get one layer of bases at least, ideally, right? Um, this epicenter game, if you ignore the bases, uh, you do so at your own peril. Especially if they manage to get all three of them. Your team's kind of hanging around the edge of the map, uh, doing their thing. You're going to lose that game, almost certainly. Uh, this is very punishing game mode if you're going to ignore it. And uh, you'll, your win rate will skyrocket, or your loss rate will skyrocket. Um, so I'll just try and capture the bases. Taking some free shots on the Sharn Horse here, why not get a little bit more damage? Try and scare him off. We want him out of that second ring. And there he goes. We could finally start capturing uh, ring number two. And, of course, we're going to try and do that. It looks like we got a couple of uh, the Destroyer and... Potentially that other cruiser to the east, all capturing. So this one should go pretty quickly, hopefully, as long as nobody's getting uh, reset often. And we're just going to pursue the Sharn Horse. Now, we've still got the carrier on the loose, but, you know, we do have two more smokes. Still got about half our health, so really, once we establish the second ring worth of scoring, we need to be playing a little bit more defensive uh, or potentially just playing a spotting role, right? They don't really have anything that can sneak up on us. Uh, aside from the carrier, of course, but their cruiser all the way off to the west somewhere. Uh, we've got a low health Sharnhorst, and we've got a Hayuga to the north. Um, so these are things that shouldn't necessarily surprise us, unless we're being a little bit uh, reckless, not paying attention to our surroundings. And if we're not getting surprised and getting spotted, that means we have the control over the game, right? We At this point in time, we've got a two-ship lead, um, but they've sunk battleships. You know, we've sunk lighter point ships ships with fewer points when you sink them uh so you know they can come back relatively quickly but as we control this two cap lead for a while well then the score should get out of control for them chumfan coming in here and we can actually wreck that thing pretty easily the no no armor on that thing he's trying to disengage here we're trying to take him out 
and that would be really nice. Sharn Horse low as well. We've got to keep an eye on him, but I want this cruiser off the board. And there we go. Kill number four. Not bad. Now, at this point, we're thinking Kraken. We got two ship lead. We got the two cap lead. Um, why not? Right? Let's go for it. Um, but Red's actually going to claw their way back here and keep it interesting, but uh, we'll see if we can get that Sharn Horse. At least that's going to be the first order of business. He's pretty low. He's got about 15,000, 16,000 health, whatever it is. Not something we're going to be able to rapidly gun down here, but hopefully uh, with a few ships supporting them, uh, we can maybe get him off the board. Hayuga, I'm going to throw him in here because it looks like he might be turning in. These guys, of course, on the red team need to be all moving into the center of the map. Maybe not the carrier, uh, but these two battleships, if they're trying to win the game, the only play to be making is to go directly into the middle of the map. Freeze our scoring at worst or uh, potentially secure those bases for ourselves. They're ignoring that, which means that they're ignoring one of the ways to win the game, right? It's always worse to foreclose one of the ways you can win. One of the ways you can win this game is by winning on score, either hitting a thousand points or having more points at the end of the game. doesn't matter which. You can almost count that as two ways to win, you know, getting across the finish line to a thousand or just having more at the end. Uh, there are different ways to win by a score or, you know, if you foreclose that by ignoring the scoring for long enough. You cannot physically capture or catch up on the score. Then you're forced to sink everyone. Much harder proposition, especially when you're down multiple ships. He's getting me low here, and he's getting pretty damn close to sinking me. So we do need to start being a little more careful. At this point in time, I'm not really worried about the win. Um, so I'm still fine dying here. I would just prefer to uh, get the Kraken since we're pretty close on it here. Uh, you know, if... The situation looks dire and looks like they're going to probably win the game, then we'll probably be a little bit more conservative. But I think killing the Sharn Horse is the right play, uh, regardless if we have one kill or four kills. Uh, he's low, and he's kind of the guy that's pressing the middle of the base a little bit more. So we got the Torps coming in here. The Fubuki gets spotted for no reason, doesn't even launch, uh, basically commits suicide. I uh, got bored, I guess, and stuff out here, sitting still for 15 minutes. Uh, but nevertheless, he's probably going to go down there, carrier nuking him, down he goes, and now we've lost another ship, didn't even see what happened there. Now we got to start thinking, okay, we got to be a little bit more careful here. Um, being more careful would probably be capturing the base rather than getting off the base. There's a little bit of an error there, probably too focused on getting the Sharnhorst uh, killed. I think I, if I remember my thinking at the time, I was also trying to get away from that plane a little bit because he potentially can kill us, especially now that we're down to 800 health. Uh, and he's proven he can already hit a torpedo shot on the story. He just killed the other guy. Uh, so things are looking a little bit more dicey, but here's the kicker. They got two and a half minutes. They cannot catch up on score, right, even if they get all three bases. I don't think they got enough time to catch, catch up on score. And our carrier, who presumably has all of his health. Now we don't have any way to check on him. So we don't know that for a fact, but just due to what he's doing, he's probably got all of his health, and he's he's a long ways away from the enemy carrier. The surface ships certainly can't get in range to spot him slash shoot him. Um, so really, as long as we got one guy that cannot be sunk, and a lot of times if your teammates are out of position, or in this case it's not necessarily out of position, but it's a good defensive position where he's not going to get sunk, then you you're fine, right? So, again, they have to kill everyone on their team because they ignored the bases the entire match until the last two minutes, and now they're not going to win. That's just all there is to it. So we're going to take the shot here. looks like the Torps probably would kill him, but, of course, uh, we want to guarantee the Kraken. And did we get him with the guns? No, the Torps actually did get him. All right, so <laughs> we arguably we killed ourselves there for no reason. Fair enough. Um, but, again, you know, they got 1 minute 20 seconds to sink the carrier. Can the Hayuga get in range to shoot him? I don't think their carrier can kill our carrier in one minute. And there he's got all of his health, so perfect. He doesn't know how to auto-steer, but in this case that pays off for us. He's just ramming the edge of the map, and he will not be shot. So, uh, that's a pretty good game overall there. A little bit aggressive on my part, but uh, we kind of did what we needed to do uh, to win that one. So overall, the Trigo, I'm not in love with it. Um, I did get my butt playing it. My butt kicked playing this one going against the Tier 7. Now, I don't know if it just happened to lose that fight. Uh, just got savaged by whoever I was going up against. Or if that ship is pretty strong. So I'm looking forward to at least seeing what the Tier 7 looks like. 
And if that one's kind of ho hum as well, then maybe I'll put the line on this shelf until they uh, decide to get around to buffing it. But at this point in time, based on my full grind of the Torigo, and really I maybe boosted just to the hull and then ground out most of the uh, the games itself. I'm not too super impressed. I guess I can tell you how many games I played in. 35, 60% win rate, which isn't horrible, of course, but uh, it's not super strong either. So anyway, that's going to, I'll just cut it there a little bit early. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you guys, and we'll see you all later. All right, peace.